a bike returning after, let's say, a sabbatical mm -hmm. or a leave of absence mm -hmm. is the all-new 2025 Kawasaki KX450 SR or Special Racer Edition bike. This bike was first introduced back in 2022, and I think at the time it was kind of going to be branded the Eli Tomac Factory Edition, hence why it came with KYB suspension both front and rear. Then it got uh, reintroduced back in 2023 with all your goodies pretty much. The race team inspired graphics, seat cover, clutch cover, X-Trig rock triple clamps, but this time you had Showa suspension. Mm -hmm. And that only it stuck around for just one short year. Back in 2024, Kawasaki released the all new generation KX450. And along with that, they released their 50th anniversary edition bike that came with special edition graphics, seat cover, silver hoops, which looked really cool. For 2025, we were wondering, hey, is this special edition racer bike gonna come back? And it did. Dude, just looking at the bike, it looks really freaking good. It does. I agree. The styling is really clean on it. It catches your attention, but I feel like it's not overly done or overly loud. It just looks very factory, but in a good standout way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the simplistic look they took with the graphics. And one of the first things that stood out to me was there's no infamous monster claw on the bike. That's big. Yeah, which is huge. Monster Energy and Kawasaki have had a long relationship. And if this is going to be, let's call their special racer or factory edition bike, you would think it's gonna heavily mimic the bike that Jason Anderson and a certain Spanish rider are going to be riding in 2025. <laughs> when the SR was introduced in 2022 and in 2023, it sported that monster claw, both on the shroud, the front fender, the rear fender, I believe as well. So interesting to not see that monster claw on this bike. Uh, but it does support your other logos. I saw Dunlop was on there, Hinson was on there. Yeah, man, a really elegant looking bike. And which leads into the next talking point, which is the coatings that this bike comes with. If you look at the fork, I mean, it's a beautifully Kashima coated upper or outer fork tube. And then on the lower, kind of something interesting with the PR uh, wording that they did. Mm -hmm. I think they're calling the new one like a dark blue or dark navy blue. Yeah. Which it doesn't look like that. It could be just be the way the light kind of came off the fork, but it looks just like the previous generation 2023 fork with the black titanitride or trioxide coating, which still is a cool coating. I'm just curious if it was just a mismarket on their end, kind of like what happened on the 250. It's in the 250 had 48 mil show of forks. And then we find out it's actually has 49 yep. um, on it. So probably just one of those things. I wonder if it's the same exact forks from the 2023 SR and now it's just on the 24 or is it coated tubes with the same 24 internals? You see what I mean? Like, is mm -hmm. it the previous internals from 2023 or is it the 2024 internals just with dressed up coatings on the outside? Yeah, time will have to tell. But if one of you guys pick up a 2025 KX450 SR, don't be shy. Bring it in, you know, yes. we'd love to take a look at it and mm -hmm. uh, just do a deep dive video on that. But for sure, we have an old video real quick where we compare the SR Kawasaki suspension with the production suspension. We have them laid out top to bottom right next to each other. We go over the details and what's different. So if you're curious about that for the 23 model, uh, you can check that out and we'll do something similar this year with the 25 once we get our hands on it. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine a lot of what you talked about in that other video comparing the SR and the standard suspension is probably going to translate between your standard 25 KX450 and the 25 SR KX450. Sticking with the suspension, the it says that this bike has specific settings for the SR that are different from the standard bike. So mm -hmm. I wonder what they mean by that. Are they doing a massive overhaul or are they just a subtle change? Or maybe it's the same because we have seen that in the yes. past. Um, but I wonder what they mean by that because they say that's for the both fork and shock on this SR has mm -hmm. tailor-made settings for this bike. So what do you think they could have possibly improved upon or changed with the SR? Yeah, good question, man. You know, going back to the 23, it was pretty minor changes, but it was all very well thought out and placed changes. And to articulate that in more detail, some riders felt like the 23 regular edition <laughs> bike was good suspension, but a little on the soft side. And then the SR had slightly firmer suspension on it. And a lot of riders tend to favor that instead. My guess, just off the previous, what we've seen in the past, I would think probably something similar as well. And we've kind of already noticed that ourselves. meaning the 24 and the 25 is a great bike, a little bit on the soft side for the more aggressive and fast riders out of the box. So I would think they probably did something similar at this suspension to give it a little more hold up, make it more of a bike you can ride a little more aggressive right out of the box to go hand in hand with that SR kind of special racer edition. And it looks like the shock body uh, itself is actually coated. 
Um, one thing that stood out though is no coatings on the shock shaft itself. Mm. Which is yeah. kind of a bummer, just because it went yeah. all out in the fork. I mean, the fork lugs are done, the inner tubes, the outer tubes. You also have the X-Trig rock triple clamps to paired with that on the fork. Mm -hmm. The shock, they just did the shock body itself. So one area that they could improve upon, wink, wink, mm -hmm. heading into 2026. Yeah, that, and it looked like it was a 16 mil shaft still. So um, it would have been really cool to see an 18 mil shaft like Honda was doing on their works edition models. The reason for that is a lot of people assume we do a bigger shock shaft for like rigidity. So the shock is harder to break. It's not so much that it actually has to do with the bigger the shock shaft, the more oil the shock shaft is going to push through the compression adjuster on the shock. Um, so for the same amount of travel, if you have a 16 mil shaft and an 18 mil, the 18 mil is going to push a lot more oil through the adjuster, making the adjuster more effective in the damping it provides as you ride, but also the clicker is more effective in terms of when you adjust them and the amount of feedback you get back from it. Maybe we'll see that next year out of them, but we can talk about what we hope to see at the end of the video. Uh, moving on a little bit, we'll touch on the engine. Granted, we just do suspension here at Ride JBI, mm -hmm. but uh, we won't spend too much time on the engine, but it says it comes with a modified cylinder head, polished intake ports, and you also get a coated cylinder head cover. Um, really nice. It kind of just looks like the, the standard one, I'm gonna be honest. It does, it does. <laughs> it really does. But what else looks really cool on this bike is the factory race team inspired Henson clutch cover. Super cool to see that on this bike. You get a full pro circuit TI6, not just a standard, a titanium front and rear we love exhaust titanium. system. Yeah, <laughs> we love titanium here at Rad JBI. And uh, that thing just looks really cool. Moving on to the wheel set, this does come with a DID STX wheel set that's both front and rear. Super cool to see that just because they're quite a bit stronger than some of the other offerings that even the standard bike comes with or even some of the aftermarket offerings that you can go and purchase yourself. But one thing that you pointed out to me was there's no billet hubs on the mm -hmm. wheel set. Again, going back to what they could improve upon for 26, wink, wink, and uh, maybe add to this bike. Yeah, I mean, even if the hubs are just silver, I think it'd just be a good match to the rest of the bike. They did the extra clamps to get rid of the stock cast clamps. So I just think the billet hubs would just be, it just fit the rest of the bike and what they're doing to it. Mm -hmm. uh, overall. And then we noticed that the engine hangers were the same. They have the substitute or the optional, optional yep. mounts and it doesn't look like they're using those. It looks like the same hangers uh, for it. So interesting to see what they're doing. Really cool bike. Like the SR looks badass. I wonder if it's going to run how kind of people expect the 450 to run. Like this can be much more powerful and fast and kind of brutish than how the 24 and 25 OEM or non-SR non models are. I mean, this bike is arguably the best, let's say, bang for your buck when it comes to works edition bikes. Obviously, the Austrians have a really good trio um, of bikes and Honda has done a really good job with their works edition bike. But I feel like this bike, whenever it comes out, people are like, Kawasaki does it right. Man, if you're racing the stock class and you go and buy one of these things because it's going to be stock legal, you definitely are going to have a leg up on the competition. Oof for sure so i can see a big market in that alone just for the advantage you're going to get likely a faster motor better stock suspension thing just looks sick yeah so they they have a good market on their hands in terms of not only your active racers um that are going to want that bike but also just kind of your everyday war weekend warriors like us that just want a really cool bike I think we're getting towards the end of the video here now. One thing that strikes me is the price point on this bike. Now the standard Kawasaki, if my memory serves me correct, it's $10,599. This 2025 KX450 SR is a whopping $13,599. Now on paper, that is a tough pill to swallow, but I think if you were to go out and buy a 2025 KX450 and then do all the goodies and mods that you get with the SR, you're yeah. well over that 13599 price point. For sure. And That's... plus you have the downtime of waiting for coatings and yeah. a bunch of other things, just waiting on parts to arrive and whatnot. So, I mean, is the juice really worth the squeeze? Good question. I mean, let's ballpark some numbers. I think the extra clamps, depending on where you get them, let's say 800 bucks. <laughs> Some people will get deals, so they might get a little cheaper, but I think retail is more around a thousand, but let's just be conservative. What's a TI Pro Circuit exhaust? Roughly 1399, I wanna say. For sure. Um, coatings alone, like if we were to coat your suspension for this to do upper tube and lower tubes, just over a thousand bucks. Yeah. So just for the front forks. Um, the rear shock, let's say that's about 350 for a Kashima coat on the shock body. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're, you're spot on with that. They, they did their homework. 
Yeah. Unknowing and, if you just go buy the bike or buy that stuff separate. Yeah. And we didn't even touch on the full wheel set, the motor work. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much everything else that you get with that bike. So I feel like for those guys, especially those vet riders who are just drooling over this bike, I feel like the juice is worth a squeeze. So go ahead and purchase one because <laughs> they're only limited to a few hundred bikes. Um, I remember my days back at Langston Motorsports, those things were hard to get their hands on. Mm -hmm. And I would expect maybe two, maximum three bikes per dealership, um, depending on the area. So I think we just answered it for you. If you're going to go ahead and purchase the KX450 and do all those mods, then the juice is worth a squeeze. But if not, and you want to keep your bike just relatively stock, then you know, the standard KX450 will do you just good, so. For sure. Um, and if you'd like to make your <clears throat> Kawasaki suspension work as good as the SR model or even better, or as good as the kit suspension, we've got some really high performing and positive feedback on our JBI spec kits for the Kawasaki, not only for the forks and the rear shock. And we got complete details on that on ridejbi.com. Yeah, well said, man. And not just revalve services, but also our DIY kits, yes. which feature the same attention and technology. Drop it in yourself and go out and have some fun. So super cool. Um, I think that's it, man. I think it's going to wrap it up. This is one of two this week because we have the Triumph TF450RC coming out in Ooh, just two days time. So I'm cool. super excited. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Shop Talk or Bike breakdown, whatever. We're doing this kind of impromptu as this is the same day as the bike is released. So um, by the time you guys are watching this, we probably filmed this just a couple short hours before the mm -hmm. video is posted. So uh, thank you guys. Once again, we really appreciate all the traction and um, attention that the YouTube channel has been getting as of late. But once again, we will see you guys in the next episode. Stay cool.